In the last episode, you saw us cross the hazardous Gulf Stream from Florida to Bimini in the Bahamas. In this episode, we find ourselves smack bang in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle, looking for the Fountain of Youth and meeting the star of Bimini, learning all about the local delicacy conch and how to make a traditional conch salad right off the back of Ultra Dash. Okay, so what are we doing, hun? Going to buy conch. Don't know that way. Oh, down Up here. Onto we're the going. Street. We're going to buy fresh conch straight off the fisherman, and we've got a local yokel who is a historian here, and he's going to come and to our chef. boat tonight, and he's a chef, and he's going to teach us how to make traditional conch salad. So that's really exciting. But we've got to hurry because these guys are waiting for us waiting for us to buy the conch, fresh conch off them. Well, I don't think they're waiting for us. I think they're just going to... No, they're but... waiting for us. <laughs> they're doing their job. So we're meandering down the streets of Walking Bimini. The middle of the road. And we're on our way there's, to there's see a, these guys. There is a pavement you can walk on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey we're friends! <laughs> <laughs> Friends and lovers and help with the others. Okay? This is Star, everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, enjoy, enjoy. Uh. <laughs> Do you know that guy? Right, so here we are to buy some fresh corn. Where did they go? I don't know. Oh, oh there they are. are. Hi guys. Hi guys. So I believe you have the freshest conch in town. Well, I'd like some. Some. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we yes. would like four, please. Four conch or four dozen? <laughs> <laughs> four for now. I'll but four for now. But if they're really good, we might come back tomorrow. Well, this is the sweetest conch in the world, so you'll be back. <laughs> well, so how long did it take you to catch all these today? Uh, uh, three hours. Three hours. Yeah. Well, these are all the conked shells. Oh, these guys, they're haul for today, three hours worth. All right, we're gonna give you a half a dozen for 10 bucks, okay? Oh, wonderful, thanks All very right. much. You got a deal. All right. So how do you catch them? Do you have to go down and dive for them? Yeah, just go down and pick them up once you see them. Right. They say, come on and get me. <laughs> <laughs> so someone can eat me. Do the sharks give you any problems? No, he didn't. He, I don't. I don't think he, he didn't complain about the sharks today. They're pretty good. Okay. So what we're doing now? We're putting these onto bunches, and we're going to ship them out on the boat, and they can send them to the capital, to Nassau. Oh, ah, yeah. okay. Thank you. Whoop. That's beautiful. Right, thank you, Thanks a lot, mate. Thank you. All Thanks best. very much, guys. Thank you. So we've officially been conked. <laughs> 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 All right, very exciting. Coming back home to Ultra Dash with six conks in hand ready for them to be turned into conch salad this evening by Chef Star. We were advised to put the conch into salty water, put them in the fridge for storage so that they 
Um, stay fresh. Three. Okay, into the fridge. Star, so tell me about Bimini. Bimini. Bimini is a small little island. Okay? A small piece of leather going any kind of weather. Even though we are small, we survive the biggest and the baddest set of hurricanes, okay? And Bimini means Bimini, too many islands, north and south. Bimini has three eyes. When two asleep, one always awake. And three shades of blue water. That's what Bimini means, three shades of blue water. And Bimini is no good without sharing it with you lovely folks from far and near, okay? We don't like tourists. We like visitors to our shores. We meet as friends, leave as family, okay? We don't want your autograph. We just want you to have some fun, okay? Because if you come on a sailboat and you come on a jet plane, we're going to treat you just the same, okay? And that's who we are in Bimini, okay? We want to share this little rock with you beautiful folks from all over the world. And thank you for allowing me to say these things for you and your husband and the crew on the boat and this is what I live for. Just remember now, take Bimini and enjoy it, okay? This may be paradise, but it's not paradise without having you guys to share it with. Thank you, Star, okay. that's just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy girl. Yeah. <laughs> You started, to, you started to sound a bit like Muhammad Ali, you know. <laughs> Float like a butterfly, sting like, like a bee. bee. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> what a legend. So this is, this is Star, the legend of Bimini. Now here he is right here, and we have the pleasure of sharing a, a, a beverage with him and having a yarn. See that little island over there? With the trees, yeah? That's called Gully Island. Oh, yeah. Every afternoon, all these gullies would go over there. Oh, is that right? To sleep, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All them, and, and, and used to be just a sand bank. Oh, yeah. And then they put it in the Yeah, see, yeah, because they eat seeds, yeah. And they, they shoot yeah. it out, and yeah. then that's, yeah. how, that's how those trees get there. Yeah. But that used to just be a sand bank, sand, sand yeah. bank. Yeah. But now it's Gully Island. We call it Gully Island because that's where all the gullies at the end of the day, even if they go to Honeymoon Harbor yeah. or they come back and that's where they go, that's home, yeah. But yeah. somebody has to stick around and give you the history yeah. of the island, yeah. you know? Yeah. You gotta have somebody knowledgeable around the yeah. place to give the people the history of the island. About, say, four or five years ago, they used to have a, right up there as a pen at the Big Game Hotel. Mm -hmm. And what they'd done, they started feeding the sharks, and mainly the bull sharks, and now, we can't get them out of the harbor. Mm. You know, they, and they're plentiful. Now, we were growing up with nurse sharks. You splash on the water, and a nurse shark just oh, leave. Right. But the bull sharks is very aggressive. Yeah. Even right now, if I was to catch a fish or two, and I start cleaning them, right over there, you'll see the bull sharks coming in. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, for the funniest thing, we never had a shark attack in Bimini, you know? Mm. Yeah, we never had a... They're too well fed the shark attack. So, yeah. There you go, honey. No that's shark attacks. No good. shark attack. <laughs> on human. They're too well fed by all the other good fish and the fact that the people are feeding them anyway. Thanks, Star. No take on them now. You can't, you can't harm the shark. Right. Yeah, you can't catch them and eat them no more. Okay. That's just like the sea turtles. We call them sea steak. No. Yeah, and uh, you can't you can't catch them and eat them no more. Okay. We got them now for pets. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean some people still catch them, and they just call them hush mouth steak. <laughs> 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 so, so yeah, if you if you go somewhere and and, and they go, uh, well, I I got some uh, sea steak. That means turtle. Yeah. Or some people will use the term uh, hush mouth, hush, hush mouth steak. That's okay? so cute. Or, or hush hush, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, so. Like, don't tell anyone. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Yeah. But they, oh man, they like stew beef, man. That is such a great steak. Yeah. Is it? yeah, I used to, I used to, when I used to chef, before they put a barn on them, yeah, I used to do a lot of cracked turtle steaks and, uh, yeah. Wherever we travel, 
we seek out really interesting things and mysteries, of mysteries and weird intrigue. and wonderful stuff. Yeah, and in Bimini, we came across well a few things. But I mean, first of all, Bimini really was we were getting to enter the Bermuda Triangle. Ah. Um, and the other thing we came across was the Fountain of Youth. The search for the Fountain of Youth. Yes. So the Bermuda Triangle was really interesting because our friends were really worried. Some of our friends were really worried when, when they knew that we were coming to the Bahamas because where we were traveling, we are square in the Bermuda Triangle or the Devil's Triangle as they call it. Weird stuff has happened in the Bermuda Triangle that can't be explained really by anybody to date and there are lots of different mm -hmm. Uh, theories, but there have been hundreds of ships lost and planes in the Bermuda Triangle. Um, some where the ships just disappear without trace, no mayday calls and no distress calls. Other times the ships are found floating and all the crew have disappeared with no signs of preparation. Just um, vanished, yeah. completely vanished with um, no struggle, no sign of having to abandon ship, nothing. Even the dinner table set ready for dinner as though people have just been plucked yeah. out of the ship. There was also a whole squadron of US Air Force planes that were flying out towards Bermuda and, uh, Bermuda, and they got lost in the Bermuda Triangle and again they, they uh, disappeared without trace. That's right. Um, so it's really weird and these are obviously they had technology at that stage. And also like a big naval ship that was fully equipped with you know uh, distress calls and the equipment to abandon ship if they and, got and into and trouble communicate. and communicate and they had everything on board and they three over 300 passengers on board that was including the crew um, just disappeared without a trace and it's never been found so what are the theories so the theories are one of them is pirates and pirates are prevalent in like this area doesn't explain but that still doesn't explain how a bunch of pirates could round up 300 people <laughs> or how could round with, up with, with that, yeah. many people and and get them off the ship without a struggle um, there's also um, mysteries like giant sea monsters has been another one where giant squid in particular where the squid has come in and you know taken all the, the people all the crew another one is uh, an asteroid. Asteroid. So many years ago, in Christopher Columbus's day, someone on his ship, an explorer on his ship, saw an asteroid fall out of the sky and splash into the water around these areas. Now they claim that it may have magnetic properties that play havoc with people's instruments, planes, and and, and ships. And and for that to be the case, the the, the impulses of electromagnetic impulses have to be intermittent because otherwise you know every ship bus passing by would recognize the magnetic so you know if there was some intermittent release of electromagnetism that destroyed people's um, um, navigation gear that's a possibility mm. uh, but it's really weird and it hasn't been explained so the other one is aliens aliens, <laughs> aliens are always thrown in there <laughs> if nothing can be explained it might be an alien and it could so be aliens who it knows could be. It could be absolutely, but you know that that's kind of the the things that are out there. Okay, the so we are now in the Bermuda Triangle, and we will be watching for Twilight Zone. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll keep a very close eye on everything. So okay, let's get on to the Fountain of Youth. In all of our travels, we seek these things out because mm. it's just very interesting. Mm. Uh, when we were in. France, we went to the Fostion, which is, you tell them about the Fostion. The Fostion was incredible. It is, um, a, a town is built around the Fostion and it's a, a, a Jurassic uh, spring that bubbles up and at, a, at an extraordinary rate. And the spring has amazing properties in, amazing elements uh, and, and minerals within the spring and um, it's said to have healing properties. And at the time, John had a really sore leg. Knee. Knee, and mind you. From all that cycling and <laughs> hill walking. Yeah, in France, but um, the the temperature of the water was like. Really, really cold. Oh, it's, it had to be like about, you know, four degrees or something like that. Because the moment you put your, your hand in or anything like that, it went red straight away. 
and I encouraged John to put his knee in because <laughs> give it a crack, I say. So there he was dunking his warm, fleshy knee into the water of the Faustion and really, what happened? Oh, the pain did get better. It was really, really cold though. Miraculously. <laughs> Miraculously got better. But who knows, it might have been that it was so cold that the coldness just took away all the pain. But yes. anyway, it did feel better. It did, so. But let's go on to other places around the world. When we were in um, Indonesia, there was a large waterfall that was renowned to give you an extra year of life every time you went through it or behind it. Um, so, and it that was in Rinjani. Yeah. Rinjani uh, was the is the volcano. On a lot of energy, Lombok. like yeah. it has a lot of natural energy. So um, we made our way around. It's very difficult to make your way around because it's this thunderous waterfall in the wet season, which is when we went up there. And if you make your way around the entire waterfall, then it means that you have an extra year added on to your life. So, so we gave it a go. We gave it a crack, yeah. And so we'll see what really happens. Good. Yeah. And then, of course, they have, we visited uh, yeah. Bali, where they have many, many natural springs that claim to be found, the Fountain of Youth. Um, so we went in there and we bathed and we drank <laughs> and we did everything. Um, and, um, and also you're bathing in water that's been sanctified. Uh, sanctified, that's been chanted over, that's been prayed over and all that kind of thing. So that's going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, there was a guy whose name escapes me in Bimini who came to look for the Fountain of Youth. Oh, uh, it was, It's like Dion Foss. D, D. So we went there searching, um, looking for the Fountain of Youth. So as far as the natural spring waters go, whether you drink them or whether you bathe in them, um, the jury's still out because they don't know whether it's the quality of the water, it being pure and it being having minerals that, um, that conducing to healing, or it's the fact that these geothermal um, springs are often very, very hot or absolutely freezing cold, and it may just be the temperature, um, just like John Snead. So stay tuned because as we go around in our travels, we're going to be checking out all the fountain of youth that we possibly can, <laughs> all the geo springs and natural healing uh, and metaphysical happenings yes. that cannot be explained. Yes, believe it or not. <laughs>
The only thing hard up with a woman is their head at times, but they are right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they are right. <laughs> I know you guys think I'm crazy, but no. You know, I'm, I'm, I just love people, man. That, that's just me. So you're going to be famous. I hope so. People are going to come to Bimini and say, where is where Star? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I you guys are talk. crazy. <laughs> So what did you love to do most in your hmm? in your dash in your life? What are the, what what was your favorite things that you did in your life? My favorite thing in my life was coaching the league baseball because that helped me make a difference in one's life. Yeah. There was a guy called Mr. Van Kemp. He invented the pork and bean. Yes. Mr. Van Kemp. I buy that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, Mr. Van Kemp used to live in Bimini. We grew up with his kids. Mm -hmm. Then you had Mr. Avis, the rental car man. He's at a four-story hotel okay. down the street. Yeah, we grew up with his kids. Then you had Mr. Detergent, the guy that invented them, which you wash clothes with, Mr. Ch the chair. Powder. Chair? Yeah, really? well, Mr. Detergent. Yeah. Yeah. Then Don Tyson, the chicken man. Yeah. They grew up in... Tyson? Don Tyson, the chicken man. Really? He grew up in little Don them. Ooh. See, you gotta realize that wow. one. See, Bimini was always encountered with good old inventors, people that invented stuff. Yeah. Okay? Because we had the guy that invented the hubcap from Detroit, Michigan, Mr. George Lyon. Okay, with the Mustang. And these had the hubcaps. Yeah. We grew up with the kids, man. That's what I'm telling you, baby. This is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> like I say, Conk is a Bahamian Viagra. Good for your sex life, all right? We'll test it out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> put some more lead in your pencil, all right? Okay. See, a woman comes to be pleased, not teased. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, when you get weak in hips, you gotta get strong in the lips, man. It's, it's, it's good. Come on, please, baby. Get so, you the tomatoes. We'll take the inside out of the tomatoes now. Inside of the trees. I don't know what I mean. When I should take the inside. Do you want me to? No seeds, no flip nothing. Them. Okay, it's skin so it's just the it. skin. Alright. Yeah. But I'm not sure how to do that. How do I show you. Let me show you. Alright, you see that? Yep. That's what I want you to do. See ya. Alright, now I'll just get rid of that like that. Alright, I can do that. Take your time. So and hurry up or hurry up and take your time. <laughs> <laughs> what that does is it kills the it kills the lime. It flattens it because it's watery. The inside of the oh, tomato. Oh, the inside of the tomato. Oh, yeah. I know I do. The funniest thing, in Abaco they grow the biggest um, grapefruit in the world, probably, yeah. and they sends it to America, and then we got to buy it back. Oh. Oh. Cucumber, same thing. Oh. So you know, it's like it's crazy. Put it together and you can do this. See? You do that. Okay. Ooh, dicing. Right, well, now he's, he's cranked it up man. a notch. I'm an Alice boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an uptown girl. <laughs> so, do you, you obviously you know the person doing the dolphin house? Yeah, that's my cousin. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Sunday. Yeah. That's, that's How often does she work on it? Every day. Really? She's been working on it for over 20 odd years now. So now what do we do? That's what we do. You got to get your spoon now so you can turn it up. Shake, shake, shake. Okay, so I can okay. <laughs> Gives me instructions. I'm under pressure okay, to do the right shaking okay. and stirring. Baby. And you gotta laugh occasionally, because apparently that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy girl. <laughs> I like that. Goes oh, into the food. Yeah. 
Taste, 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 taste. So you, you taste it, is it, you have it raw, do you? Like that? Yeah, huh? No cooking? Cooking? <laughs> Serious? <laughs> lemon, lemon cooks it. Yeah. It's like Hawaiian fish. Yeah. You guys may like a little hot sauce or little whatever, you just gotta add it. Oh, oh my god, a legend. Here we go. Oh, salad. This is the first time I've ever yeah. tried um, conch. We deliberately oh, didn't ever. have conch salad in, in Fort Lauderdale because we wanted to have it in the Bahamas. Here we go. Mm. Oh, that is so good. Yeah. Have you tasted yours yet? No, I haven't. I'm filming you. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I am glad I that I tasted my first conch like this. We're glad we met you, Star. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad I met you guys. It was charge you ten, fifteen dollars for. And not as good. <clears throat> Yeah, not only that, you watch it made, mm. so you can do it yourself. Thanks for coming along on our journey to the beautiful Bahamas. And to be notified for the next part of the journey, like and subscribe and ding the bell so you can come barefoot with us. Love and health to you all. Good.